while we wait to see if a single person decides to compliment, we should talk about the elephant in the room with this generation. The iPhone 17 Pro and the Pro Max are now different depending on which country you buy them in. So some countries like the US will sell the eSIM only versions and others will sell the physical SIM versions, which we've had before. But the difference this time is that the eSIM versions actually have a larger battery capacity, about 5.5% bigger for the Pro Max and almost 7% on a normal size Pro. And to be fair, I think in concept, this is great. I totally get why Apple is so keen to axe physical SIMs. Like, the only benefit of them is that they make it a bit easier to switch from one phone to the next for some people. But in a modern 2025 flagship phone where most other things are being optimized on like a nanometer level, it does feel pretty wasteful to have this random large chunk of plastic which needs its own SIM tray and SIM reader and housing. And the difference in battery you're getting by removing this stuff, 5.5% and 7%, these are pretty enormous numbers. Like, that's actually bigger than the average difference in battery capacity between generations of iPhone. Okay, that's probably enough of Slack. It's getting a little weird in here. So let's flick over to some lunchtime Instagram doom scrolling. Now, one thing to pay attention to is if we look at current battery percentages, then well, actually, A, the iPhone Air's battery is already starting to slide comfortably into the 80s, but also B, there is, at least right now, almost zero difference between my iPhone 17 Pro Max and the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which kind of brings me to the other side of this eSIM coin. But given that I'm in the UK, one of the countries that has physical SIMs and therefore smaller batteries, are these new phones even going to be an improvement? While it's great that Apple is increasing the size of the batteries for eSIM users, is that the only reason that they're able to say these new Pro iPhones have this enormous leap in battery? Do you just not get one of the key selling points of the phone if you're buying in well, most countries. That's what we need to get to the bottom of. Now, the other thing that's very surprising is that even though we're now closing in on three and a half hours into this test, the iPhone 17 isn't really outperforming the iPhone 16.